Hi everyone, I am Priyanka Lora, B.Tech IT third year student from IGDTW and I am an upcoming SWE intern at Microsoft. Today with us we have Urja Kohli, she is also second year student, B.Tech ME from IGDTW and additionally she is also pursuing bachelor's degree in data science and programming from IIT Madras. Talking about her achievement, she has been entitled with government CSIR invention title and she has also been Nutanix Advancing Women in Tech Scholar. As evident from her achievements, she is guided by three P's, passion, patience and power. So hi Urja and welcome to my YouTube channel and thank you for joining me today. Hi, uh, thank you for such a great introduction. I am honored uh, to be here sharing the screen with you on this on your youtube channel and i am enthusiastic about uh, sharing my uh, experience at the nutanix women in Tech, as a nutanix women in technology scholar so yeah that's it okay urja although the video was meant for nutanix women in tech scholar but i am curious how are you pursuing two degrees at the same time so i would like to know more how are you pursuing two different degrees from two different universities one from igdtw and another one from iit madras Okay, this is one of the most frequent questions which anyone asks me usually. So uh, I would like to, I'll be happy answering this. Uh, I think pursuing two degrees is more uh, requires time management, of course. But more than time management, what it requires is uh, passion. Uh, because I had passion for computer science and uh, you know programming subjects, I did uh, enroll for the degree. And uh, trust me, it requires. Uh, a lot of hard work managing two degrees simultaneously we have so much uh, we have a rigorous curriculum here at IGDTW as well so uh, when I say uh, like what exactly happens I'll just give you give a brief about how the degree is framed uh, we have offline exams uh, the all the graded system there is offline only so there is nothing like it's like a degree with online exams it's, nothing like that you have to appear for the exams on regular intervals there is uh, just like us midterms and sense but what makes it uh, kind of manageable is that they um, have the um, online assignments which we, we have to complete weekly and uh, they have recorded class so we have to just watch them so there is nothing of uh, offline classes attendance rule but yeah there is the assignment rule there but uh, as I said, managing both the degrees can only be possible if you are uh, if you want to actually pursue the subjects and you have not just taken the degree just for the sake of doing it because I see many people have just taken it uh, because of that only. So if you just run towards the tag name, uh, I think you can get a very good placement and whatever you want. You can explore the opportunities at IGDTW as well. But just only if you are passionate about the subjects and if you think that you'll be able to manage it. I had that kind of experience from my high school years. So I I didn't find any, uh, you know, uh, transcendental problem in switching uh, from both the majors. But uh, you can get it if you are a newbie completely. So if someone wants to do it, Probably you can start it after one year, um, after exploring and just do it uh, um, after you have seen all the, the whole curriculum and it's a time management better. as well. So yeah, you have to cut down on some things to gain something. So it's true. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, as you rightly said, you have to cut down on something if you want to gain something. I completely agree with it. Okay, Uja moving towards our main topic. Uh, that is Nutanix Advancing Women in Tech Scholarship. My very first question to you is, what exactly is Nutanix Women in Tech Scholarship and who is eligible for it? For it. Okay. So firstly, I will start with uh, what is Nutanix uh, Women in Tech Scholarship? So firstly, I will start with what is Nutanix? Okay, who is the organizer of this scholarship? Nutanix is basically is, is an American cloud uh, computing company that sells uh, software solutions uh, for data centers and uh, hybrid multi-cloud deployments. Uh, in 2018, it started a scholarship um, under its uh, avenue only that was named as Nutanix Women in Advancing Technology Scholarship. It is awarded to, it is awarded to help future tech leaders to 
pursue their uh, to pursue and complete their education goals particularly um, they award up to 10 scholarships to students from nine different countries i would like to name name the kind of ratio it is so that the viewers can understand how competitive the scholarship can be uh, so it's like four they, they do select four from the us four from india two from netherlands two from serbia two from spain uh, two uh, from united kingdom two from france and uh, one one each from australia and mexico so total Uh, they have listed on their official website i was referring i have re- i'm referring to the 2024 data uh, total they have listed 20 scholarships but they award 10 uh, up to 10 scholarships only depending upon the kind of applications they receive each year so they are not that uh, they have to complete that minimum 20 barrier they are like if that person is actually deserving of the scholarship they only then they will lay out uh, those 20 otherwise they are happy with them uh so about the eligibility uh you can be a student uh you can be a undergraduate or a graduate student uh attending school or you attending school here i mean by school it means university on their official website they have listed it that uh, you should be attending school in the us uh either in the us india serbia netherlands spain uk france australia and mexico apart from this you can be pursuing a degree the degree major should be related to computer science uh, computer engineering electrical engineering software but they do not have any uh, kind of uh, legitimate rule that you cannot apply if you are from uh, any other degree so nothing stops you from applying if you have a good background in uh, computer science so that because it's a tech scholarship so obviously they would want that uh, the money they are giving goes into uh, like helps the student to build a tech career right so that is what you need to make sure in your application that it is uh, presented in such a manner that you are a, you are passionate about technology and uh, you will uh, use the scholarship amount that you get into something good for tech only and uh, apart from this mostly people have this doubt about the gpa criteria uh, yes they do have the gpa criteria as well it is 3 gpa on a four scale if you convert it to uh, like if i talk about the indian scale 10 scale it is uh, more than 7.5 gpa cumulative uh, i do not refer to just the semester one it should be cumulative of all the semesters you have uh, until now uh, in your particular degree right and you have to submit the official transcripts for the same uh, again this transcript is something which some people think that's very new it's a very new word transcript is uh, like a consolidated grade statement i would say on one sheet of uh, paper your all the semesters with the grades and the cg on, and the gpa would be listed you can contact the academic department of your uh, university to help you they help you sanction this and uh, usually i would say that please contact it if you are serious about applying then please contact the um, your department you a kind of one month uh, you know give them a buffer time of one or two months because things take time to process so just because of you are not getting the transcript your scholarship it shouldn't be like that i couldn't apply just because i didn't get the transcript so Think, so you have to be proactive in that terms then uh, the fourth point as listed on the website is that you should have strong leadership and communication skills which will be inevitably presented from the um, from the uh, application that you fill in which we'll be discussing forward in this video then a record there should be a record of co curricular uh, activities and community service this is something new part which is uh, different from other tech scholarships i have seen uh, in nutanix vit uh, scholarship what happens is that in, uh, co by co curricular activities you can include the position of responsibilities that you have been uh, you know leading in your college or university time if you are a first year student then you can have a high school record or something then community service if you are involved in organizations like i am involved in enactus so that helped me uh, added the i added that in community service apart from this uh, 
if you are part of any um, campaigns like girl up campaign you can add that as well if you have been any case of volunteering which you have done so that is much appreciated because they have a separate uh, separate application form no like in the same application form there is a window a separate window for extra curriculars and also for the communities so there are two different so you have to um, mention this and there is one more for honors and awards that you might have received so there is no problem if you haven't received any um, people think that they have to have it the achievements and the awards if you don't have it uh, like it will come on the way only so it will come in the way only so uh, i'd say that if you have certain prs in your college and you have uh, some uh community service uh, experience um you should be eligible for the five for the five points that i have listed yeah that is it for the eligibility and what nutanix is about yeah you were very thorough through it uh i remember that i went through the form and i was remembering the points like uh, she has covered this as well and she covered this as well the whole application form went from my eyes right now you covered it so well So Urja my next question to you is what are the benefits of being a Nutanix women in tech scholar like if i get selected what are the benefits and perks that i'll be getting okay as the scholarship suggests um you will get the funds to pursue your academic uh, requirements that can be uh, that depends upon the uh, university that you're pursuing first you are enrolled in the tuition fees of that university but then but i'll um, i can give you the amount like it's 2000 dollars for india so if you are selected you are getting somewhere around 1.67 uh, lakhs that can be that would that would decent to cover my tuition fees at least my tuition fee and then some courses that i had to buy you can um, you know consider it as um if you want to pur- purchase some course for dsa i see people for web development they are passionate about it in second third year so there is no hard and fast that you have to uh, uh you have to just use these funds for um, just technical skills uh, enhancement of technical skills but uh, for the tuition fee yes you will have to provide them with the scripts that you have paid it uh, for some eligible cause only and you haven't used it for your personal uh, desires i would say so they would require the proofs and the fund and the funds are usually sanctioned to the university only so they uh, reimburse the amount and the things work like that apart from the tuition fee what it can include tuition fee courses it can also include your your materials or the books which you want to buy um this is one uh, perk second one it opens the doors for other scholarships as well because if you see for the next year you will be you will have a candidate that okay i am a already a nutanix scholar so some z some xyz company will also uh, have some faith that okay this company has already analyzed it it is just about how the internship works works so if you have interned at a particular company you have that candidate and that that is going to stay with you uh, till time immemorial immemorial so uh, this thing will be will stay with you so it will add a lot more candidature because it's a very competitive scholarship i'll be very honest it is a competitive scholarship you have to organize the application process will end up teaching you many things it doesn't matter if you're qualified or not qualified uh, it doesn't matter but uh, the way the application is designed it will help you uh, analyze or think about those small small things which you haven't really thought upon so this is one thing it will open the doors for many other scholarships so, thirdly it does open the doors for other uh, opportunities as well as in if you want to further um, whenever you progress in your third or fourth year or whenever you want to go for internships you can apply at nutanix they will for sure give you an advantage because you are a nutanix scholar already so why won't they prefer a candidate who has already been a scholar in his or her jun her junior years why won't they prefer that candidate over a completely new one so this is one perk that you will get and uh, fourth uh, this is a very big perk i think and uh, fourth is that 
you are getting an international recognition so that is something which is uh, which will automatically open many doors for you uh, neither in like not only in uh, just not only restrict yourself into scholarships and opportunities like that but also in team building the network that you get you know you get to interact with people who have uh, who are similar who have similar interests so you get to know them probably you can plan some projects with them or uh, if you are interested if some person like me interested into entrepreneurship will go into that uh, side hustle area so this can these perks there's a lot more opportunities which you don't even know what uh, you get from from being selected in one thing unless and until you get selected it so i i i can right now i can assure you that if you apply and get through it you get to know many more things that uh, you are not aware right now i became the nutanix scholar in august 2023 so it's like not even a year i but i have got a number of opportunities inclined to it like added added advantage is always there so right now even i am yet to explore what the things lie uh, you know in front of me because of this scholarship but as far as i can gauge it's all a positive first okay the perks of being a nutanix scholar itself tell its competitiveness and as you mentioned there are there are only 20 scholarships worldwide so it is very competitive okay urja so my next question to you is what are the steps to apply like uh, as you mentioned that the nutanix application form has an essay part how to write that essay how to frame it and what are the keywords or what things that we should keep in mind while framing that essay and how should one fill the application form that uh, i stand out from other the candi- other candidates so that i get selected coming to the steps to apply um you can go to the official website how to find the official website type on google nutanix women in technology scholarship uh, you will find the first link and on that first link uh, you navigate just across the page you will find the apply button just scroll a bit and you will find the apply button uh, on the apply button you have to sign in and then the application forms open adding the basic details including name university name and everything uh, goes without saying and then the second page opens the second window which will uh, include your candidature basically they do not ask for your cv they ask you to put in your cv there so they are uh, a bit uh, tricky in that i would say because uh, what happens in a cv it depends upon person to person for example i am making my cv i am not including the skills there someone does not have a skill section someone does right they do not want to uh, make the application process very tedious for them as well and it will be unfair for the students if someone has a like better framing skills than others uh, despite being more uh, probably eligible for the scholarship right so what they do is that they open uh, the window opens and you have to manually enter all the details there i did i was uh, just taking a look at my uh, application um it was saved so i was uh, taking a look at it so i can just read out the columns which are there which will help you prepare what all you can you have to add it so the first one uh, there are three win- there are three windows there are three uh, subheadings on the same window the first one being um, community service that comes first under the community service they will ask you first to put the name of the Uh, community service you are involved in then the average hours per week that you have spent the third column comes a number of weeks that you have spent per year then fourth number the week, number of years that you have been involved in to it then when you know when exactly they do uh, i have seen this uh, this was the way they have organized it is was very good because it's like somewhere i see that people who participated in probably six standard Uh, one activity they did in sixth standard they added it into their cv which is not a problem but people do not de- uh, mention the dates deliberately so it makes it very vague for the uh, reviewer also because how can i uh, judge you for something that you did 6 years back so of course you did it but they want to analyze that if that person is actually doing it till now or not or you have just left it 
sometimes sometimes you just do activities just for the sake of doing it so they wanted to gauge that that when from that when question and they have a next question there are you still doing that activity so yes or no you have to answer that so they are very uh, smart in the application process they have made it pretty straight forward they want that each and every person has equal opportunities uh, equal number of columns equal number of the rows can be different depending upon what how many you have but this is for the community service secondly comes the co curricular activities the co curricular activities again you have the like first the name of the extra curriculars then the description you have to write the description uh here i would say they have a word limit for the description i do not remember exactly but um, as far as i know it should be like three four sentences maximum and uh, this i feel that people say when four sentences are maximum you will have a tendency to write it till the full stop is over you know till only zero words are left you have a tendency to. i think this is a very uh, it is not that good habit because if you are able to uh they are looking for the in an application what they are looking for is also brevity means a conciseness right so they are looking for how concise you are um can you just summarize the, if you are able to summarize that four sentences into two and that saves their time and the motor so just by explaining one sentence into four sentences doesn't make the call you have to be clear enough about what you are adding there uh i would request all the people who apply please don't be vague about your application uh be straight forward explain what needs to be explained uh do not uh, over diverge the information which is not even required i see some applications which i ne- never see these applications but yeah i have seen people uh, applying in a manner that uh that is like you add the information and then uh you are keep on adding it which is not even required for example if i'm doing for example a extra curricular can be uh, a workshop that i participated in so in that workshop what can be the description this was the uh, like there is one column in that row only a uh, number of years you have spent and the highest position you held in that workshop so you do need not mention it again in the description also what was your position because that is already visible in the fourth column so if i want to mention it what i'll mention about the workshop just a line about the workshop and maybe how many participants are there if you can add any one point that is competitive for example whenever i tell people about nutanix scholarship so if you are a nutanix scholar and people don't know about the scholarship tell them you are only amongst the 11 students who are selected so when you say that you are only among the 11 students that makes more impact than you saying that i am a nutanix scholar because the samne wale ko nahi pata people don't know about it right and the third part of the application is the honors and the awards if you have had any uh, explicit honors even if not explicit uh, any honors the uh, high in high school you have won something meritorious awards in my school there used to be academic meritorious awards in my uh, like in university if you have been a re- department ranker you can add that as a merit award right even if you haven't got a trophy for it but you know that that but please don't add false information because they will they do uh, have the transcripts and they require you to prove to submit the proofs right so honors and the awards may be same uh, it's the same the first column is the uh, name then the level level this is a new thing is it national international district level school level college level they will have a drop down so they want to know about what kind of uh, at what stage did you uh, win this award and then the number of years number of years usually mean uh, like at what for how many years you have got this award like is it too recent or is it too late so i would suggest that one point uh, i would like to mention here there is nothing uh, wrong in adding an achievement that you did in probably 7th 8th standard unless and until you are being true to it that you did it 6 years back if you write an achievement that you did in 7th saying that it has been just 2 years that is wrong 
so they have not asked you that you cannot write anything just the recent ones the recent ones are preferred but it's not that the uh, efforts that you had put in your high school years go in vain they do not uh, it carries a lot of importance and uh, yeah the best way you can present yourself uh, adding about since it's a technical scholarship people will say people might assume that we have to add only tech achievements uh, but they have different different as i just showed you uh, community service is not a technical part right and they did it's basically an all round well uh, they want to judge the scholar as a well rounded person and not just a uh, in just the tech part right uh, apart from this answering the last part of your question that is the essay in the essay there are four points which i can remind myself right now the first is the candidature it matters right what they judge in not in the essay but overall uh, the candidature matters the first point uh, what activities you have been doing uh, that is that that matters a lot right because they do have a separate window for it so uh, then the second one is the clarity in your essay the clarity of thought how why you are they ask you a question why you are uh, um, enthusiastic about applying for newtonic scholar what makes a difference like what will how will your life be different for what is today after being a newtonic scholar so be true to it if you think that your financials are not good you can just present it if they are okay like if they are good enough but you still because they, this is not a scholarship for just uh, those who uh, who are not Uh, financially affluent it is for everyone so uh, you you can present the best part you have to analyze what your best part is uh like why that why that scholarship matters for example the clarity whenever you are writing an essay uh now i see that uh, in many in many uh, applications people use uh, ai tools which is like till the last year we didn't have this thing at least um as far as i remember i didn't use it probably the people would have had it but i didn't use it please don't use ai tools because they do have it, it, come on it's a tech, it's a technology company so they do have some these turning softwares which will just remove the um, ai applications by default so and even if you are using it for some maybe because it is required sometimes i can understand it is required for some um, grammar or synonym something like that what makes you can do like a rephrase something but that rephrase should also work with your own brains uh, afterwards because just by rephrasing the thing and making it too complex to read please do not make it too complex uh, because at the end of the day the person who is reviewing your application is also a human so uh adding good see there is a difference between being good in vocabulary and being forcefully good in vocabulary right writing the you know jargons and you know buzzwords something like that will ultimately make your application not will ultimately won't make your application stand up so you have to be true to yourself and conciseness is something which is very important uh like again if the essay is of 3000 to 5000 words uh like it's not that you are writing it till 500 till the 500 5000 character is complete please complete it as soon as like as much as the information is required D- try to divide it into paragraphs and essay can be divided into paragraphs i write it in this manner only and then like uh, with the connected paragraphs you okay, can do not fill it with too many quotes uh, sometimes students just feel that they feel that applic- that essay mean writing quotes at the end at the start it's not like that uh, depends upon what the question is you can start with a beautiful quote but then go on with the we do the point okay and then the sop uh, it's like consider the essay as an sop like a statement of purpose why you are applying and uh, this reason as i already mentioned this can be you can have different reasons do not have the same you can be you can have cliche reasons as well 
because you want to grow you have to have a better tech future your academic pursuits you can add the perks which i mentioned in the video you can use the perks as in your own language how to rephrase them you can say that you are enthusiastic about meeting the kind of network that you will get uh, because that is what they are uh, be hum that is what they are looking for over and all be humble in your uh, answer it shouldn't be like you are to even if you are too experienced it shouldn't look like you are boasting your uh, your uh, achievements i have seen that um, sometimes what happens you have 10 achievements and you have included those 10 achievements in your essay as well as well in your extracurricular section so they have made two sections for some purpose only please do not repeat because they are going through your application in one single go they have already read about it they don't want to read read about it again and again right so that is what it is be humble in your tone and uh, be to the point yeah and you'll be good to go with essay very 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 well explained urja i was like you went till the depth of my question so urja my next question to you is what is the timeline of this program like when do the applications open and how much time do they take to declare the results and other timeline that we do not know so thank you for your question uh, the application timeline um, i am referring to the one which is right now for the 2024 applications from the official website uh it opens on uh, february 1 it has opened right it is accepting applications then the application deadline is may 31st and uh, um, i would just mention here that it doesn't matter if you are uh, submitting your application in february or if you are submitting your application in may they do not evaluate you on first come first basis uh they might evaluate but you are not given an edge over that if you are submitting in feb it the application should be complete should be well enough uh an incomplete application submitted in february doesn't make a cause uh for a complete application submitted on may 31st so that's it for it then in july they announce the winners you will get a mail in mid july or starting of the july i say in mid july in by the second week of july you get the mails uh you will be notified through mail only rejection i don't know if they send out rejection mails but uh i don't know i cannot comment on that but you will be notified about if you if you are accepted or not i don't think so as far as i know my friends applied as well i don't think so they got a rejection mail so if you don't hear back from them Uh, by mid of mid of july or probably end of july in the max case uh you can consider that you are not shortlisted uh you may not mail them for the results because uh this is one thing which i have observed nutanix is very very punctual about their schedule which they have posted on the website because in the august the checks are issued the money is sanctioned they'll ask you for the bank details the bank details of your university uh because they don't want the money to go in uh the student hands uh right because it's a scholarship amount so they would ask you so you can just complete that formalities easily with your college you can contact the academic department uh, for that and uh, then we have uh in the august i remember um uh, in august by uh, 18th of august i got the um by 18th of august um uh, i remember that because i was that day i had to uh, go for the uh, i would to leave for the harvard uh, project for asian and international relations conference in hong kong so i was just about to leave and i got the money i got the scholarship amount so i remember that day so that's why i remember the date even uh then like about third third week of you can just calculate by third week of august you get the money and one more thing here they are very punctual about the schedule that they have posted so you don't need to mail them that uh, about the updates you have to have patience after may 31st i see that sometimes what happens that we start mailing them about the results uh, you need to be patient enough uh, by if they have said if they have mentioned july they mean it july they mean july 
so you can just track it from the official website only uh, if there would be any changes i to actually i forgot about the application even like i submitted the application and then i didn't track it because at the end of the day you are submitting many applications and in any one there would be like you can't keep a track of every every each and every application so just submit and forget about it. that can be a cause and if you get it in july you will get this in july and if you just keep on hanging upon that it will uh, it will be a bit messy for you because you have to consider it in other things as well and as i said the application overall builds you and uh, it's about the process and not just about the uh, waiting time that is very bad if you are just waiting yeah so this is about it yes it totally answers my question all the timeline is completely clear Okay Urja moving towards our next question so my question to you is how has been your experience being nutanix women in tech scholar since it it's been about an year so how would you like to explain your life before and after the scholarship okay so my experience has been an enthralling one it has been uh, really amazing being a nutanix scholar uh, like it has opened firstly it has opened a pool of opportunities for me like it comes stacking like it comes stacking one by one over the other so that uh, i got nutanix scholarship and then uh, a few more in a row like not the scholarships uh, some opportunities which build my candidature in such a manner uh, it's about i always feel it's about the first step then it goes building the block so uh, thirdly i have got the confidence uh, the confidence that confidence being amongst those 11 girls selected worldwide you you get to carry that you get to own that confidence that in itself is a very big uh, thing because sometimes i think about it i sit down and sometimes i think about it i come i soak in like it's a big thing right i would say that people kind of sometimes take it take some achievements too seriously and too lightly if they don't get something they sometimes take it too seriously and if they get something they take it too lightly so you have to be medium mediocre about your achievements while having that kind of confidence in yourself of course being like uh, a part of something so competitive builds the builds you as a person uh, it helps you you know categorize yourself that okay someone else sometimes what we do is that we do we uh, are not able to give ourselves uh, that kind of a kick uh, or a push but when you know that someone else showed uh, optimism showed trust in you and they selected you as a scholar so you would have had something which made them uh, you know uh, them Uh, impressive about your application and it's just not your application is actually you right so i would say that if you get through it take it positively don't start taking it too seriously oh, i i just own the world something like that it's not like that and do not take and if you don't get it just uh, it's not that just take it like too seriously i didn't get it i i couldn't i could have done better so it's always there is always a next time firstly firstly i i believe that there's always a next time and as i said multiple times i would have seen i've reiterated it multiple times that it's all about the process the learning which you will get uh, from filling out the application i always feel that just filling the application for the sake of it is not the key right take give you the application some time i i remember i gave application that kind of considerable time which it deserves right it shouldn't be like last day you are just sitting one hour there uh, and filling out the application of course unless and until it's a genuine case but uh, give the application uh, the time it deserves give the time uh, to your brain to think about it and the kind of network that has that it has opened it is immense right uh, after nutanix scholarship i have come to you know connect with many of my seniors like you right and then many other as well in a series not even my immediate seniors seniors from other colleges in india abroad and other uh, avenues so this is something which you should be proud of for sure 
lastly i would like to mention that whenever uh, it comes uh, nutanix whenever you talk about nutanix women in advancing heart scholarship you should be uh, you should be uh, you know reminiscent about that application that made you plus one right uh, what i mean by plus one is that this is my personal advice uh, whatever application you submit just save a pdf and after a few months even like if when you get the result of even if you're not if you're successful not successful that doesn't matter but just revisit that application you will be able to understand that at that point of time you had this number of op- this number of achievements fill it again next year there's no end to filling the application head fill it next year start comparing yourselves this is how i have been growing over the years right the application in itself will help you uh, what happens that the sop in one application can also be altered a bit and can be used in the next one as well so you can note that point and uh, say whatever you are uh, submitting because you may you might not get the access afterwards so have a pdf have a copy of that whatever you wrote and try to analyze it uh, pause it try to modify it like if you can do it better and this is how you are learning and it's a, it's all about a process it's not about just one scholarship it's about each and every this these are some points which you can take away from me from for each and every scholarship or opportunity that you apply for it is about the learning process it's about the network it's about the competition the confidence and the opportunities that you get thank you so much Thank you Urja and it was very insightful like I myself got a lot to learn from you and all I want to say is that you are pride of IGDTW that you are one out of 11 worldwide so we are very proud of you thank you so much I'm elated to hear that thank you so much Urja for joining me today and you took out time and I gain a lot of uh, I gained a lot from you and hopefully the audience also has and if any of you still have any doubts I'll be mentioning Urja's LinkedIn you can connect with her and ask your doubts directly from her and thank you Urja for joining me today thank you for hosting me thank you <laughs>